going to be playing Restoration Druid Turbo Cleave. So taking a page from XRB to the Moon's book from the European region, see their success with it. They've decided to adopt the composition for themselves. On the opposite side, Misfit Toys are playing a bit of a Misfit composition, wouldn't you say, Joe? Yeah, the Feral Assassination Holy Paladin. And, you know, love to see that turbo, you know, like playing that comp myself. So it's great to see from Gongs and a Melee Cleave against a Melee Cleave. I actually think this is going to be a very quick game, which is kind of unconventional in BFA. And we'll see Yon Yon and Bogus. They really need to try and get those kills. Maybe they'll look to Zerg down the Restoration Druid because I'm not sure who else they can kill. Looks like, like at the moment they're getting great crowd control on Volchok. Nux is trying to heroic leap to break it up. He was one second too late, but that intimidating shout is pausing the fight yes. as Bogus is feared away. Iroh looking for a cheeky. Hex trying to deny some off healing there potentially. Young Young retreating away. Nux dishing out the pain, forced to switch targets now. Curious that uh, Lee is playing the Blinding Light talent on the Holy Paladin so they get the Cyclone Diminishing Return. They can do a very long crowd control chain with Stun into Blinding Light, but at the moment, Gronks have all the momentum. Yeah, they already forced the Trinket Survival Instincts from Yonya and Bogus and Lee also getting low. They have so much cleave pressure right now onto Lee, but there's the Smoke Bomb Kidney onto Nux. He doesn't have his Trinket ready, but it looks like he's just going to be okay. Bolchok with a great Tranquility there, going to keep him alive, and they don't even need other defensive damage reduction right now. Lee charging in on his way, but he gets hexed. They needs to get that dispelled into a bash. He trinkets it to land that Hodge onto Voltrog right now. But Yon Yon getting very low, and they're just in desperation right now, having to use another survival. Ooh, the instinct. sap! Great sap coming out from Bogus as well. That could get a lot of pressure onto Nux, but he has Trinket die by the sword if he needs against his Vendetta. Despite that amazing crowd control from Misfit Toys, they were the ones on the back foot throughout this entire exchange. Lee's and his entire team is just dead at this point. Almost no defensive cooldowns remain for Misfit Toys as Gronks are looking for total annihilation in game number one. Lee caught into a Storm Bolt with no Trinket. Nux gets peeled away, but Iroh will connect. Lee desperately trying to kite across the map and escape to safety, but with everyone still hanging on by a thread. He's doing a great job despite it. Yeah, the Turbo Cleaver just doing an absurd amount of damage. Ira and Nux just pumping out the pressure. They're full blinding on the Voltro, though. They need to be careful. Ira actually has to use his Trinket Astral Shift here, and that was the Vendetta, I believe. A full bash onto Voltro as well, still getting crowd control. Doesn't have the Trinket ready, but like you said, Misfit Toys are on the back foot here, and are looking very desperate to survive right now. The buff comes out into Yon Yon. He gets purged right away from Ira. Great job on that Enhancement Shaman, huge bursts coming in from that Sun Ring, but it looks like a defensive kidney is going to peel that. All right, Misfit Toys, they're, they've managed to stay alive. They've got no Trinket now on Volchok and no Trinket on Iroh. Uh, no Trinket on Nux. They've actually got a pretty strong win condition if they can get some good crowd control onto Volchok moving forward. Mana definitely in favor of Gronks, though. The longer they stay alive, the less likely Misfit Toys are to be able to take victory. Pressure on Yun Yun Lee doing whatever he can to keep this going. Holy Paladin is a bit of a priority pick for the Korean region. They just really love that healing class. They're trying to do their best with it. Resto Druid obviously going to be out manaing them, though, but he's still trying his best. They've still got an Opening. They've managed to bait Iron Bark, but they're desperately trying to stay alive as Yun Yun dips lower and lower. Wincher into Storm Bolt. Great crowd control from Gronks as Yon dip dips into Execute range. He's just been running and kiting throughout most of this, managing to hang on barely. Yeah, he had to use that survival instincts as well as the blessing of sacrifice coming out to Lee. And now he's just out of mana. They need to make something happen. And Lee is doing just that. He charges in, bash over to Voltrog. He's going to follow that up with the blinding most likely. And he does. Iroh could be in some trouble. Voltrog opting to Trinket to keep him alive. He still has that incarnation. He's going to have the Iron Bark soon as well. Now a full fear onto Lee. This could be huge trouble. Bogus having to use his human ratio with evasion right there as well. And they're soon just going to run out of defensive cooldowns and die by the looks of it, Sid. Yeah, Gronks have been running the attrition fight throughout this. They've got the mana lead, and now they've got their defensive cooldowns as well. This is looking worse and worse for Misfit Toys. Will Yun Yun, the Korean hero, be able to carry his team in what could be the final moments of this match? Lee has been doing a phenomenal job on this Holy Paladin to keep his team alive through this pressure. Nice double stun from the team of Misfit Toys in this potentially final moment. Unfortunately, didn't Denied by the Astral Shift, and now Bogus dips low, caught into the Storm Bolt, and somehow Lee is still going for how much longer? Everybody on his team is dying. Volchok is still locked down in crowd control, but with the Disarm, Bogus cannot counter pressure. Nux looks to secure the kill. He shadow steps away. He goes
goes for the smoke bomb, and he doesn't get it, unfortunately, there. It was a valiant effort by the Misfit Toys, but the Gronk's defense is impenetrable. It was a good try, though. I really like the step smoke bomb. I thought he died, actually. His health bar disappeared, obviously, as he stepped across the map, but the execute did come in from Nux, and Nux had an incredible game there, Joe. I think as you as a warrior yourself would be impressed by that. Every blinding light, he had an intimidating shout. Every disarm was on point, and his team, like Sid said, impenetrable. Yeah, and right at the end there, actually, he was putting his war banner down, and Bogus actually did very well to read that, kill that off, and then fight. They're just going to fall behind and inevitably lose. So if they do decide to run this composition in game number two, I want to see them commit to one target throughout the fight, because they've got no time to fool around. Um, I mean, we talked about at the start of the game that Gronks have kind of a almost an infinite supply of compositions. We saw even in Legion, they were running so many different ones with Iro, the addition to the roster, playing that Shaman Elemental and Enhancement now. But do you think they expected... Man, this is going to challenge them. If Misfit Toys opt to go on Voltruck here, they're going to have to play defensively really well, not overlap any defensive cooldowns. And like we said, Turbo is very durable right now. Iro has such beastly heals instantly on that Enhancement Shaman, and the opener will matter a lot, I think, in terms of getting Gronk's defensive cooldowns, being able to punish them later if they're able to force them quickly, but we'll see exactly what goes on. There's the full blind instantly trinketed there by Voltrock, and not an offensive cooldown was even yeah. used, so they could. You know, I would love to see them actually opt to go on Voltrock, catch him off guard, and get huge burst pressure onto him. I think that's what they want to do. They're retreating. When babies anfangen, davon zu kabbeln, wird es schwierig, ihnen herkömmliche Windeln anzuziehen. Pampers Pants mit optimaler Passform. Sie lassen sich ganz einfach anziehen, auch wenn ihr Baby sich bewegt. Für einen optimalen Besitz und bis zu 12 Stunden Trockenheit. Wenn Babys anfangen zu krabbeln, ist es Zeit für Pampers Pants. Away and trying to bait Volchok into the open and cross the map. And if they can catch him midfield in a stun with no trinket, it's a very big opening for them. Let's see if they can execute that. They're trying to drag Nux out of line of sight, force more pressure. He's taking immense pressure early on from Misfit Toys. Hammer of Justice! Is Nux just gonna fall in the opener? Bogus dipping low as well, forced to trade out evasion to recover. Tons of damage committed to Nux early on, but unfortunately not securing a kill, which means the Gronks are gonna be extending this match into their win condition. They did force out that trinket and die by this one. I believe they caught him out in that battle stance, and that's what created that huge amount of momentum and pressure coming in from Yun Yun and Bogus. But now they're counter pressuring. They forced the blessing of sacrifice as well as the trinket from Lee, the survival insects from Yun Yun, and Bogus. to escape to safety, trying to bait Iro and Nux downstairs. They're not falling for the bait. If Just don't have a win condition. They need to try and find one, and they're just unable to against this Turbo Cleef set. Yeah, I mean, er They're locking all three players down at the same time. So Hammer of Justice on Volchok, Mame on Iroh, Kidney Shot on Nux. If they can execute that triple stun, 
remove all of the defense from three members. Perhaps that is a viable win condition, but the execution just isn't there. Lee is falling behind. They're not playing for the aggressive strategy, and they're playing completely into Gronks' hands. I agree, yeah. Then both teams are just kind of playing to live, and that's just going to favor Gronks 10 out of 10 times. Lee's going completely out of mana. Bogus and Yonyon are taking so much pressure. You can see right now he disarms as well. He's getting into that execute range. He could go down. Lee is doing his best to keep them alive. Once again, the kidneys onto Ira. He actually wants to trink it out of that. He has the ascenders. He's just pumping out the pressure right now. Lee trying to push in to get a hammer of justice onto Vulture, but he gets bashed instead. Great play there by Vulture using that cat charge to get the bash on him instead. And he's just going to fall further and further behind, healing them, eventually go out of mana. And then I just think it's going to be a repeat of Nagra and Sid unless they the, do Right here, they've now. got an opening. There's the hammer oh. of justice on the Vulture as well. The kidney shot as well, but they need more pressure. There's the bomb though as well. He used that tranquility once again to counter it. And I think they're going to be okay. They've got Iron Bark. He's being greedy. Now into a full blind trickety and recovery. And Yun Yun just gets completely eradicated throughout that exchange. A valiant fight once again from the Misfit Toys. But Gronks are looking great. Iro with an excellent display here. It's his first time at a LAN event. He's playing an alternate spec and he's really carrying the team. Yeah, I mean, they're just looking so solid. It doesn't seem like anything. I mean, there was moments where we talk about the greed, about whether they're kind of holding onto their corners a little bit, but they always seem to have an answer. Smoke bomb, tranquility, blind, fear. There's always something for the Gronks alive, and they're just playing it cleanly. It seems like they're unstoppable at this point. ...in this match, so the Misfit Toys are definitely showing signs of life. I just think they're targeting throughout the mid-game. Starts to get a little bit too loose. They yeah. need to commit to one target as this composition. They don't have enough damage to support all of the switches that they're trying to make. And I mean, like, part of the reason that's so difficult is because not only are they dealing with such a great defensive composition, it's just so much damage coming out of Gronks. Right, yeah, they just have so much pressure from the Enhancement Chon as well as the Warrior. Just cleave pressure as well, having the sweep and strikes, the Ride, the Lightning, as well as Forked Lightning. They're just creating this multi-target damage the entire game. And as soon as Lee comes in for those Hammer of Justices, he also gets cleaved down. And it's just such a dip we can do with his new team as they are one game away from losing out in this first series. All right, Runes of Lordaeron. It would be a fitting final resting place as it is a cemetery. cemetery. Let's see if Misfit Toys can find a way to break the defense of the Gronks on game three. Once again, yeah, choosing that cemetery place, Runes of Lordaeron. I would love to see them gun for Voltrek. They know both these games now. They kind of lost just Lee runs out of mana and they lose. That's exactly Gronk's win condition right now. They get a sap onto Iro. It looks like they're going to pressure Nux again. Maybe they're going to try and kill him in the opener this time. They were very close to it on Dalar and Sewers, but it looks like this time they could be okay. Lee running in for that Hammer of Justice there. They're getting a lot of pressure though onto Bogus and Yunyun both having to use defensive cooldowns already. Yeah, early on Lee is falling behind to the pressure of Iro and Nux now getting wintered on a heal. It's match point. Bogus in trouble. Evasion traded out at 10% to dodge the incoming execute. A close call for Misfit Toys that cannot afford to make any mistakes. Already trinkets and defensive cooldowns on the side of Misfit Toys. This is a position they don't want to be in. This opener just backfiring a blind onto Vulture getting instantly triggered. They're getting a lot of pressure onto Nux, but it looks like he's going to be fine now that Vulture just gains his distance, spams out those regrows, and just pretty much tops his team there. I would really like to see Misfit Toys punish Volchok for making these trades. Mm -hmm. He's been trinketing blind every time despite offensive cooldowns not committed, and they could switch targets to him, stun lock and burst him down, and it seems the Mr. Toys are only playing to one specific strategy, and Volchok has basically read the situation. He's making it very easy for himself to predict the incoming crowd control and be ready, and unless the Misfit Toys have an element of surprise, I'm not sure how they're going to be able to deal with this. Lee charges across the map, secures the Hammer of Justice. They're going after Iro. Good cross crowd control. Actually getting a trinket from Iro that will be an opening moving forward. Lee continuing, continuing the crowd control chain, but is it not enough. Iro out of the stun lock now, able to support himself until Volchok Volchok gets out, and it's looking good for the Gronks. Yeah, I was just spamming out those healing surges, keeping those team alive whilst Volchok is in that C, C and this map's just kind of backfiring for Misfit Toys. I don't see them when they're not going for Volchok. It's actually easier for Gronks to connect and get pressure, but now a smoke bomb onto Nux. It looks like he's going to use his Die by the Sword, actually, against that Vendetta, so there could be an opening if they can survive for a minute and a half for that Berserking to come out of Yonion, but I'm not sure if it's going to be enough of full fear onto Lee right now. The second bop coming out onto to Bogus. It could be purged down, and it looks like they're just going to gun for that rogue right now. 
Yeah, I mean, he's the most vulnerable with no evasion on 20 seconds. Will Lee be able to keep him alive to that critical moment? There's a lot of damage. It's match point as Bogus falls further and further behind. Yun Yun now on the run as well. Gronks are really tearing in. Lee charging across the map, looking for crowd control. Vulture getting Hammer of Justice, I believe, was war bannered by Nux. Really nice play from Nux, reducing that incoming crowd control, making his team even more durable, elongating the match for their win condition. Lee already down to half mana. Significant lead already established for Gronks. It was an excellent war banner from Nux. That's what we were talking about. Those defensive plays just put Misfit Toys further and further behind, not able to get any really offensive pressure going. And now a winch onto Lee, a storm onto Bogus. He's just dropping lower and lower. Maybe the evasion comes out. The Avenging Wrath instead going to top him off with those hills. But it actually looks like the man is kind of even, but Voltrock might be going for a drink. That actually gets a bash onto Lee. He trinkets out to Blinding Light. Voltrock and now Ira in a lot of trouble. Voltrock actually trinkets that Blinding Light to keep Ira alive. There could be a huge potential if they get a full blind on him later, Sid. Yeah, most certainly not trinketing blind is a dangerous decision against a rogue, but obviously Volchok not wanting to throw the match there, expecting more damage and trading it out to survive. Looking for some cheeky hibernates, Yun Yun dodging the hibernates the best that he can, and it's really difficult for Yun Yun to even push into attack at this moment. Bogus on the back foot, trades out evasion. Yun Yun lands a skull bash on Volchok. Good crowd control. Nux is going to be the kill target, I believe. Oh. Good lockdown. He trinkets out. With no crowd control on Iro, he can easily heal Nux. Misfit Toys need to make sure they're cross crowd control, and we now see a silence. There's the main. This is the triple crowd control that the Misfit Toys need, oh. but it gets broken up by a beautifully timed fear from Nux. That fear was just excellent. He leaped into a position where he was on top of the Paladin, waited for both melee to get on top of him in the theater, but now Bogus in the huge trouble here. The huge thundering comes out from him. He could just go down, but it looks like he's going to survive for now, just kying away those melee, and great offensive pressure from Grunk as well. Even though they were on the back foot, they immediately counter pressure them with uh, damage onto Bogus, and now Lee just looks like he has no mana left very soon. They've got one opportunity here with no trinket on Volchok and no trinket on Nux, but Bogus has to survive to that point. They're forced to kidney shot before they control Volchok. Do they have enough damage to kill Nux? It's a race to the finish. I don't believe so. Bogus gets storm bolted in the reversal. Lee moves in for the final crowd control of the match, but it's, it might be long enough to blinding light. Will they be able to take him out? Vendetta has been popped. Warbanner's down to break up the chain. It's not enough. The Misfit Toys had one opportunity there to nail a kill. Now with that window of opportunity lost, it's looking grim. It is indeed. Lee just completely out of mana and Bogus completely out of health. They do take it 3-0 Grunks with this Turbo Cleave looking very dominant. Clean and clinical is the word that you can use to describe Gronks in this series. Fantastic play coming out of the Australian number one. They will advance to the upper bracket. Misfit Toys, I think a bit of a Misfit composition, honestly. The guys played fantastic in the series, but just could not break through the armor, the shield wall, the defensive cooldowns of this Turbo Cleave coming in from Gronks, and they have won it. They will advance to the next round of the upper bracket. Definitely a proud moment for Australia, Sid. Yeah, I mean, most certainly they're looking to represent again. It's obvious that Fitz is prepared. They've learned a lot from their previous experience at the North American regionals in prior years. They've prepared more than enough, uh, showcasing that they can diversify their strategies in series number one moving over to give a clean GG to their opponents. It was a valiant effort. Lee playing on that Holy Paladin, doing the best that he can in a meta that's definitely not oriented towards his strategies. And this is cool to see, right? The sportsmanship of these teams. They don't really get to interact with each other too much, of course. Australians playing on the North America servers, and that's why you see that meta kind of crossing over. But the Koreans obviously playing different servers, Taiwanese as well on another one. So they don't really get to practice against each other too much or certainly interact with each other. So it's fantastic to see that sportsmanship coming out. but. Since it's the double elimination, Misfit Toys will still compete again later today in that lower bracket, but that will be the last chance saloon for them. They need to win every series from now if they want to keep... Hey guys, welcome back, and uh, I'm joined by Fitz from Gronks, uh, one of the more well-known players. So, first question, obviously I want to ask you is, were you guys ex sort of thrown off a little bit by their comp? Obviously it's not what they're traditionally known for, and uh, we certainly didn't expect to see that. We weren't thrown off that much because we knew they did play Acerog and Feral Druid. We just thought they'd probably play with a Destro Lock as well because they were practicing that a fair bit. So it kind of threw us off in that sense, but overall it was all right. It wasn't too bad. Okay, now you guys took off last year. Obviously, uh, one of your players got a full-time job and he couldn't take time off to play. So coming back and representing Australia, are you guys excited for that? You, you want the other chance to go back to BlizzCon and do really, really well? Yeah, definitely. We really appreciate the opportunity and we love being here with all the teams. It's really a great atmosphere and it's really fun to be a part of. 
Excellent. Now, the, th the third question I've got for you guys. Now, you guys picked up Aero. He's come onto your roster. Obviously, for those of you who don't know, he's also your GM. Now, I heard if you guys didn't pick him up, he's going to G-kick you all. Is there any truth to this at all or maybe a little bit of bants? Look, he might have thrown that out there. Maybe. <laughs> All right, so I think we're either going to go back over to the desk or we're going to have a short break now, guys. Uh, we'll be back very, very soon after this very short break. And uh, thank you very much. Stick around for more Arena Action.